Um, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be legal in the long run as it is. Um, technically, it's that way as long as the European Commission has a new data transfer agreement. We have to accept that it's legal until the Court of Justice declares it illegal again. Um, so right now we have a, a history ever since 2000 where all the deals that existed were annulled backwards. So there was never any legal transfers until now. And I know the Commission issued this summer a new decision, which is not officially published. It gets published now. Um, once it's published, that actually would be a new legal basis that for the time being I can rely on. But once it gets annulled again, actually backwards on what transfers are going to be illegal again. Um, so you have a situation where as long as the law is on the books, it's there and you can rely on it. But there is a very high likeliness it's going to be erased from the books rather soon again. And you're back to square one and have illegal data transfers to the US. Um, not nothing. Uh, one part that we see is that there's now collective redress in the European Union, so people can go together and you know sue you as a company together um, for not doing it anymore, for um, also damages. So you can also say, okay, I may have you know 100 people having damages. In companies, oftentimes one big part is the unions, the workers themselves that say, I don't want all my shit to be over there. They, they can bring down a lot of these projects. Um, there's public tenure, so like if you then have to you know show that you're complying with all the laws, you will have a hard time. So I think gradually it's an issue um, and it's also just a headache is an issue. I mean, I think a lot of people are like, okay, this service is like 10% cheaper, let's do that. But if you think about having a huge overhead in administration, a huge overhead in compliance costs, you need law firms to sign papers and so on, that costs a lot of money too. And I think oftentimes people do not factor that in. So um, I think in, at the time right now, especially if you start a new project, it does make sense to think about hosting in Europe. Not that I'm a big fan of it. Like ideally we would have an internet connected world where your data is safe all over the place. But as the law stands right now, and as, as the developments are right now, we would very likely have an issue if you don't do that. So um, I think it does make sense for the time being to, to consider that and to, to give it a second thought, as long as there are some alternatives that work well and you have you know, some hosting that, that works well. But there are, they are out there. Um, I think it's oftentimes that people don't look the second or third um, option on the list, they just go for the first one. <laughs> Yeah, I can tell you, I mean, for us ourselves, we when we had the um, Schrems 2 um, decision, which is the Court of Justice um, striking down the data transfers, our compliance was very simple. We host everything ourselves, partly with Nextcloud, but also with tons of other services. Um, and they're on our own server, so my compliance took exactly one minute. Um, now others struggled for two or three years to somehow try to figure out how they, how they comply with the law. Um, and that's a lot of hours that go into stuff that, that is not overly necessary. Um, and I think it then depends on your company, what you do, what the products are, what you really need, what your solution is going to be. But um, I think there is, there is a lot of opportunity, a lot of options to um, a host yourself, find another provider. And we have to partly, one thing we couldn't do ourselves was newsletters because um, we just need a lot of functionality that we cannot really do on our own servers. Um, but we got a local company that was like, you know, I literally have the email address of the boss and I just email him if I needed something and we needed a change in the API. And he was like, oh, that's a cool idea. And we had it the same night. You don't get that at Microsoft usually. So um, I think there is, there is in, in certain areas, um, options, not for everything. We also have to be fair. There are certain certain areas where there is a it's very hard to switch because everybody else in the industry is using one thing it's you know you have these network effects and so on and that is something where legislation could change that where we say okay that you have to have open source you have to have open interfaces so that you can switch without you know without being um, held back by the people around you like the DMA but there is much more that we could do actually in that area um, but we see that that we have progress in that direction and it's very similar we had another areas when we had the first electric networks they had different plugs so you could only you know you had to buy your vacuum cleaner from the, your power company. At some point we came up with a wonderful idea of just having plugs that fit in, right. at least in most jurisdictions, um, and, and, and that works and you can now choose your product and you're happy with whatever, uh, whatever you like. And, and I think a lot of that used to be how the internet worked with you know, interconnectivity with standards and so on. Email, Email is the best example. Um, and I think we need to get back to that. DMA is an example where we say, okay, why can I not message from Signal to WhatsApp? There is no logical reason other than trying to wall it off. And, and there's a lot of options there and, and we can you know, move towards that direction. Last point there that's really interesting, I think that's also interesting for European business and the European industry, because unless we have a 
true competitive system where you have different alternatives that all have to compete with each other, um, our usually smaller structured markets are not going to win this. Um, usually then in network effect situations, the biggest one wins and the biggest ones is usually the US because their home market is already so big and then their companies are so big. So I think also from an economic point of view, it will be interesting from a European perspective to have an open, truly competitive market. Um, there will still be a lot of the big players on this market, but there will be alternatives as well. And I think that that would be a situation that, that would be interesting to get to. Also for companies, I mean, they then tell you, I, if I want to do online advertisement, I don't have an alternative. I have to go to Google. And, and if you're a newspaper, you have to have some of these advertisement companies on your platform and they take away most of the revenue and it doesn't go to journalism anymore. So you have a lot of these situations that are, I think, rather obvious that we, we need to fix and, and how to fix them. Um, we just need to get moving and, and be bold and, and, and uh, you know, follow the, the rules and the systems that we already have in place in many other ways, um, that we have open electricity network, open phone networks, open whatever networks. Uh, we did that ever since the 90s. And if you ask an American friend for them, it's so mind blowing that you have two options of internet connectivity. Right. <laughs> and it's because it used to be only the one that existed there. Um, and we did that before also against resistance, but but it made our, our system, I think, um, better, stronger, cheaper oftentimes. Um, and that could be very interesting interesting approach. There is a lack of creativity and there is a lack of taking it seriously. We see now that the, with this commission currently, with the last four or five years, that this topic comes up and that it's taken seriously, but maybe not to the extent that it should be. And it's still for, I think, a lot of them a bit the feeling that, oh, this is internet is, you know, what my kids do. Um, and it, it, it is a bit like, you know, not taking electricity seriously. <laughs> and we, we at some point realized that's, that's very fundamental and we need to, you know, have a system that works well, that is up and, and so on. And, and we usually succeed in that quite well. Um, and I think there is uh, there's more need to be bold in that and to believe in it.